define the term unsaturated hydrocarbon right so it is a hydrocarbon that contains a double or triple bond right so that is 2.1 let's look at 2.2.1 so let's write down the letter that represents an unsaturated hydrocarbon so now we actually have to identify a unsaturated hydrocarbon from our list of chemical compounds so let's look at compound a we only have single bonds right so compound a is an alkene it's an alkene it's not a hydrocarbon if it, it was a hydrocarbon uh, it would be an alkene or an alkyne right and then looking at compound b we can see clearly here because of the oh that it is an alcohol right alcohol it is not a hydrocarbon it also contains an oxygen uh, if you look at compound c it also contains an oxygen so it is not a hydrocarbon right hydrocarbons only contain hydrogen and carbon right and then if you look at compound e it says c x h y o z we have a oxygen so it is not a hydrocarbon so it's easy to see here using elimination that compound d is actually our hydrocarbon compound d is our hydrocarbon you might be asking yourself why can't i see the double bond or the triple bond you're going to be able to see that when we do 2.2.4 we actually have to name that compound but for the time being just keep that thought to yourself and then 2.2.2 let's write down the iupac name of compound a right so let's pay all our attention to compound a and do some analysis so it seems like uh this is not the longest chain right one two three four five that is not the longest chain because when we name it we have to look for the longest chain first let's try uh this chain right here it looks it looks really long let's try this chain and see what we have there we go so we're gonna have one two three four five six so we have six carbons if we follow that chain right and then it seems like it's our longest one so if we have six carbons we only have uh single bonds and compound a is a hydrocarbon then we can say that the name is hexane the name is hexane and then after identifying that it is hexane we can then you know look at the branches and put them in our iu pick name so let's go ahead and look at our branches if we start counting from this side if we say that this is carbon one then we're gonna have a branch on carbon two right let's go to the other side and see what we have if we say that this is carbon one on carbon two we don't have a branch we only have a branch on carbon three right so it is wise for us to start counting from down here this is carbon one and then this is carbon two so on carbon two we have a branch right one carbon that is methyl that is methyl and then on carbon three four on the fourth carbon we also have a methyl we also have a methyl so we can go ahead and see uh two point uh comma four right uh dash dimethyl dimethyl hexane right and then just like that we have the name of our compound a right so let's uh, move to 2.2.3 so 2.2.3 it says that uh, let's write down the iupac name of the positional isomer of compound b so let's go ahead and look at compound b we've already deduced that it is an alcohol right and then we need to find its positional isomer so again you need to know what a positional isomer is so same molecular formula but different position of the function group so all we have to do is take this oh and we put it somewhere else right if you put it on the first carbon it's wrong because you have the same thing you have to put it on the carbon in the middle right and then if we do that we're gonna have uh, those three carbons and then our oh is now in the middle right and then we can fill out uh, the hydrogens elsewhere elsewhere 
right so this is um the functional isomer of compound b right but then we're looking for the name and not the structure right but now that we have the structure it will be easy for us to name how are we going to name this we're going to say propen propen to all right prop from the fact that we have three carbons and two uh the carbon where the functional group is situated and all because it is an alcohol 2.2.3 propane 2 all right uh 2.2.4 are uh, you pick name of compound d right so that one uh, you were asking me about earlier compound d so before we name this compound let's write down the structural formula right because it is a bit complicated naming if you don't have a structural formula right so the first carbon has uh three hydrogens right and then look at this we have ch2 and then we have these four on the outside right so that uh simply means that we have four of ch2 so let's go ahead and put that in our equation uh, in our structural formula uh so we have there we have a carbon and then two hydrogens right that's the first one a carbon two hydrogens a carbon two hydrogens and there goes the last one and then now we can come to this ch right here so let's have that ch so c and then a hydrogen and then we have this ch2 at the end so we have c and we have two hydrogens right you can see here that uh, there's a bond missing there's a bond missing so what are we gonna do we're gonna put a double bond here we're gonna put a double bond so that is um the structure of that compound but we're looking for the iupac name right so let's go ahead and calculate the number of carbons we have so we have one two three four five six seven so that is hept so we're gonna have um hept the double bond is on the first carbon the double bond is on the first carbon so we're gonna have hept one in because of the double bond right it is an alkene right um stories uh let's move forward and see what else uh, we have so 2.2.5 uh we're supposed to write a balance equation using molecular formula for the complete combustion of compound a right so let's go ahead and do that so compound a we have eight carbons right six carbons on the uh, longest chain and two carbons as branches right so we can say that 2.2.5 we have c and then eight right because those are eight carbons and then how many hydrogens are we gonna have if it is an alkane we're gonna have two n plus two our n is equals to eight right so we're gonna have 18 hydrogens we're gonna have 18 hydrogens and then in combustion it is plus o2 uh, for us to get co2 plus h2o right so we're almost done we just need to balance this equation so here we have eight carbons here we have one so we need to put a balancing coefficient of eight there so there we go a balancing coefficient of eight we have 18 hydrogens we have two hydrogen so if we put a balancing coefficient of nine then we're gonna have 18 on both sides and let's go to oxygen here we have um eight multiplied by two that is 16 we have 16 oxygen right and then here we have nine 16 plus 9 is 25 yeah so on the right hand side we have 25 on the left hand side we have 2 right so it's easy to see that we need to put a balancing coefficient of 25 divided by 2 let me show you let me just erase this uh, so that it can be more clean so we have plus 25 divided by 2 o2 right now the carbons the hydrogens and the oxygens are now all balanced but then we cannot leave it like this we cannot leave it with 25 divided by 2 right we have to multiply out by 2 and if, and if we do that we're gonna get 2 uh, c8 h18 plus uh, 25 o2 to give us 16 co2 
plus 18H2O. Right, there we go. That is uh, 2.2.5. 2. Uh, let's move to 2.3. So 2.3, uh, the formula C4H8O represents two compounds that are functional isomers of each other. And then 2.3.1 is supposed to define the term functional isomer, right? So the same molecular formula but different functional group. And then in 2.3.2, let's write down the structural formula of each of these two functional isomers. So we have C4 H8O, right? Uh, in general formula wise, it is CnH2NO. What is this general formula for? This general formula is for ketones and aldehydes because they are functional isomers, right? So if we go ahead and draw the structures, so we can start with the ketone. Let's start with the ketone. So we're gonna have one, two, three, four and then double bond oxygen right uh, a hydrogen <coughs> a hydrogen and another hydrogen here right and just like that we are down with the key tool right now we just need to draw the uh, aldehyde so for the aldehyde so let's see aldehyde we're gonna have one two three four and then the only difference now is that we have to put the double bond oxygen at the end right so if we put it at the end it's no longer a ketone but it is now an aldehyde right so there we go hydrogen hydrogen yeah and just like that we have answered two point three point two right uh we have our ketone there and our aldehyde uh the last question uh 2.4 2.4 2 a two gram sample of compound e contains 1.09 grams of carbon and 0.18 grams of hydrogen the molecular mass of compound e is 88 grams per mole determine the molecular formula of compound e by means of a calculation right so let's go ahead and do that so for compound e we have what do we have there we have c x h y o z right so we need to determine the molecular formula right so what are we going to do what is going to be our first step we have the masses right the first step is to calculate the number of moles right so let's just do that first and then we're going to carry on with that conversation so the number of moles of carbon will be equal to the mass of carbon it is given to us as 1.09 right so we're going to have 1.09 divided by the molar mass of carbon which is 12 and then for the hydrogen we have a mass of 0 0.18 the molar mass 1 and then for oxygen we are not given the mass but we are given the mass <laughs> right we have three um we have three elements on our compound right we are given the mass of the two and the total mass so it will be easy to find the mass of the third right we're going to say that the mass of oxygen is two minus 0 0.18 minus 1.09 divided by the molar mass of oxygen which is 16 right so now uh, we just need to go ahead and find uh, this number of moles so for carbon i'm getting 0 0.09 so we have 0 0.09 for carbon and then for hydrogen it is going to be 0 0.18 right that is easy to see and then now we just need to compute uh, the number of moles for oxygen, right? So let me just do that real quick. Uh, why am I getting math error, right? I forgot to divide by the molar mass. Um, 0 0.0456, right? 0 0.0456. So the following step now is to divide this uh, number of moles by the smallest of the three right so the smallest here is 0 0.0456 so carbon uh is to hydrogen is to oxygen 
is gonna be in the following way so let's go ahead and divide so we divide in 0 0.09 by uh, 0 0.0456 right so if you say 0 0.09 divided by 0 0.0456 you're gonna get 1.97 so we can just take that as two and then for hydrogen 0 0.18 divided by 0 0.0456 we're gonna get 3.94 we're gonna take that as four right and then 0 0.0456 divided by 0 0.0456 that is just uh, that is just one that is just one right so we have oxygen right but then it doesn't end here we're looking for the molecular formula it doesn't end here right we have to take it a step further we have to multiply out uh this ratio that we have by some number right but how do we get that number which is supposed to multiply uh this uh compound that we have right now with we're supposed to divide uh, the molecular mass of compound e that is given to us by the molecular mass that we have from this formula here right so we can say that uh, x is equals to 88 divided by the molar mass of two hydrogens how much is that uh, that is 12 multiplied by 2 which is 24 and then four hydrogens four and then one oxygen that is 16 right so we have 88 divided by 24 plus 4 plus 16 uh, that is equals to 2 right so we know that we're supposed to multiply out by 2 if we do that we're gonna get c4 h8 o2 right and now this is uh, the molecular formula of compound e by means of the calculation